My name is Judy Smith. I am the director of the International Clinic of Biological Regeneration and our sole practice is cell therapy and that is technically the injection of embryonic and fetal cells. They come from sheep and I can explain a bit about that but the purpose is anti-aging in general, rejuvenation of the endocrine system, connective tissue, immune system uh, are the foundations of the treatment. And it's been done for a long time. I'm, this isn't something we, we invented. Um, the clinic, clinical practice of cell therapy goes back to the 30s and 40s with Dr. Paul Nahans. And he was the first clinician, although the research predated him uh, by decades. But he was the first one who used it clinically on patients. And he had quite a dramatic beginning, a woman who was dying because her parathyroids had been damaged or removed in a thyroidectomy. And uh, he took this knowledge he'd been researching and injected uh, parathyroid tissue, and she survived um, not only the surgery, but lived a long life. Uh, they were lifelong friends. And that launched his career, but he realized that beyond treating one organ, that the treatment, uh, because of his research with animals and such, he knew that the treatment was anti-aging in general. It retarded the, the normal decline of aging, which for the most part has to do with your endocrine and your immune system. So we'll deal mostly here with, with people. Um, the treatment itself is the injection of the embryonic and fetal cells. And the reason that works is those are cells that reproduce themselves rapidly. You never grow and develop as quickly as you do as an embryo or fetus. That is boom, boom, boom. That is explosive growth. It's the nature of those cells to grow rapidly and correctly because they're baby cells. They're correct in their genetic code. So when they're injected, uh, and I can explain a little bit, and I do want to explain the difference between this and stem cells, but these are cells that are slightly more mature than stem cells, and they are what's called organ specific. They've reached the, the stage of gestation, the stage of development, where a stomach, a lung, kidneys are organ specific. So when they're injected in a large muscle mass, they will migrate within 30 to 90 minutes, according to radioisotope tracing, to those target organs. What they do once they get there is set up a more rapid and a more correct duplication of cells. So the purpose is to speed up cell uh, reproduction faster than is typical in an adult and the older we get the slower and the less correct that that uh, reproduction is in fact there's a disorganization of cell reproduction at a point where the cells lose the organizational ability to divide as we all learned in ninth grade uh, biology in meiosis mitosis the division of cells becomes disorganized and slower as we age and more and more cells are imperfect. They've made mistakes every time they um, divide. There's a certain number of random mistakes, certain number of mistakes induced by ultraviolet radiation, environmental concerns, and so forth. And eventually the cell is senescent and is no longer functional. So what cell therapy is doing is, is rebooting that system so that we have more new cells, more healthy cells, the ones that can receive and make use of nutrients. It's not that they make the other things you do for yourself to be well, take your supplements, do your exercise, any of any number of other wonderful treatments that are out there. It's not that it makes them unnecessary, it makes them work better because your cells are more receptive. They can take in the nutrients and they can divide the cells more, more correctly. It has an effect on the mitochondria, which is the energy little factories of the cell. And those too decline with age. But with stimulation from embryonic tissue, you can cause the parts of the cell that are the mitochondria to reproduce a lot more quickly. And that makes use of your nutrients, um, not to get too much into the biochemistry of it. But the mitochondria are what turns food into energy. And that's kind of a mystery. You know, I, I have to eat. I don't have any energy. Well, you know, how does that work? Well, when the food goes into your cells and it enters into, it's broken down in your digestive system, of course, but once it goes into the cells, the mitochondria through a process called Krebs cycle, take the nutrients and enter them into a biochemical cycle that the output is ATP, or that's what we feel as energy. So these things decline with age. It's a natural process. It's mother nature's way of showing us the door. We've lived long enough to have children, raise children, and we're fairly useless in that capacity and uh, she's ready to say you know don't let the screen door hit you on your way out so we're trying to buck that system a little bit it doesn't make anyone immortal but it does prolong your 
active years, you look better, you feel better, fundamentally because your immune system and your endocrine system are significantly impacted. The um, endocrine system is about as good as you feel. They always say that you're as healthy as your immune system, you feel as good as your endocrine system. So the immune system, when it's functioning properly, not only keeps you from the common diseases, the flus and the colds, and most of my folks have a much enhanced uh, immune to those sorts of common infections, but over the long run, you have fewer serious infections, you have fewer um, bouts of, of the dread diseases of aging because that is a breakdown of the immune system. You're much more susceptible to cancer, much more susceptible to all, all of the uh, debilitating diseases. The endocrine system, as we all know, as women and men, start to uh, get a little bit uh, wonky on us in our 40s and 50s. And by the 50s, you are noticing a distinct drop in your energy level. Any woman who's menopausal or premenopausal, postmenopausal, knows that you have a tremendous reduction of energy. You don't sleep. You can't think. You can't remember. I mean, I, I can't tell you the times during that transition that people tell me when they're cooking something or they have a box, cake box or something, and they look at it and they read it and they throw it away and they go to make whatever they're making and they think, I gotta go back to the trash can, get it out and look again. They read again, throw it away, so go back, and finally the third time they're like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I remember five minutes at what temperature and how long to cook this? You just start losing that short-term memory. Your skin gets thinner, your hair gets thinner. I mean, there's nothing good to be said about it. So it's not that cell therapy prolongs those years much beyond menopause, but your transition is easier and you're Estrogen production is increased, your progesterone production is increased, which helps your bone density, um, helps a number of things, your sleep quality and so forth. Your testosterone, even as a woman, and of course I can speak to men on this, your testosterone level is raised. And that is your energy, that is your libido. Those are the things that make us feel young, keep us interested in life. So your endocrine system, from that standpoint, we're familiar with. That's, that's everyone's experience and everybody knows that. But fundamentally, your entire endocrine system is a feedback system. So you're dealing with one gland feeding another and keeping everything flowing in, a, in an orderly basis. So when you hit midlife and you take, you know, you got a stack of blocks there that's your endocrine system, take a block out of the bottom and that whole, that whole tower tends to tumble. So a big part of that, we treat the entire endocrine system and I can explain the cells we use and why we use them but we use the entire endocrine system, either male or female, but then I specialize in cells that have to do with what's called the HPA axis, which is, is huge in your health. It is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And that is a wheel within a wheel, if you think of the endocrine system as a feedback system. And that, that HPA axis is what influences both your immune function and your inflammation. The Adrenal's gland is to keep everything in homeostasis, to return everything to happy, even um, a production of, of hormones. But when you're exposed to um, a flu, I mean like, we, like the flu epidemic recently in the United States, when you're exposed to that, you're supposed to have a slight inflammation, you're supposed to have a slight immune function response. But if the adrenals are not working properly and don't shut that down when the threat is gone, that immune function continues to rise and the inflammation continues to rise. Ultimately, you see a great rise in immune instances of hyperimmunity, autoimmune diseases, which we're seeing so many more of now than we've ever seen. And on the flip side, the inflammation is something that um, just is, is an unfelt fire that ends up with heart disease and arthritis. And I am certainly not saying, oh, I can fix that. I can just give you cells. I can't fix that, but I can give you the cells that support those glands, that keep them functioning to their full potential for your age, for your health status, and we can reverse that a bit. Uh, everyone knows that a lot of people are adrenal exhausted. That's a very common um, complaint in, in our practice. Uh, and they are. It's not just the stress in everyone's life. Everybody's got that, family, job, money, who knows? All that, I can't take those away either. There's a lot of unseen stress. There's the background radiation. There's the 
the Wi-Fi atmosphere we're all in. We, we have no idea what some of these stressors are doing to our endocrine system. So again, I can't fix it, can't take that away, but I can give cells that help support those to help keep those glands healthy and functioning a lot longer and a lot better than, than would be the average. Of course, this is also dependent on, it's not a miracle in a syringe. You still have to take supplements. You still have to exercise. You still have to do the things you know you need to do. Avoid bad eating habits. Avoid smoking, for sure, 100%. Um, alcohol and absolute moderation. You have to live well, but given a chance, these cells will impact your energy level, your appearance, your skin texture, your immune function, your uh, inflammation cycle. You'll be able to exercise longer and stronger, and all these things working together are anti-aging in, in their capacity. Um, I do want to take a minute to explain the difference because I don't want to misrepresent this in any way. From stem cells, and a lot of my folks call this, stem, I'm going to go get my stem cells. And I'll correct it as, as many times as is polite to do so, and then after a while, but I think they understand it's just in the vernacular these days. It's so easy, it rolls off your tongue. But stem cells are the very earliest cells that have no identity. They're the earliest embryonic cells, and they explosive growth, which is why stem cell therapy is going to be a miracle and is a miracle for some very specific problems, Parkinson's, diabetes, spinal cord injury. There's no end to, to the miracles that stem cells will bring. Our cells, as I mentioned, are a little more mature, so they don't have that targeted effect on a patient with diabetes where you'd give the pancreas. And actually those cells would, in a stem cell form would have to be put in the pancreas because they don't know what they are until they get there. And then they become a functioning cell of that organ. So um, it is not stem cell. It's been around a lot longer than stem cells have been isolated, um, and it is, it is different. Our, our purpose is more of a systemic, uh, anti-aging, rejuvenation, regeneration type treatment. I've been doing this for 37 years. It's a long time. I've devoted my life to it. I'm passionate about it. I'm as anxious to talk about it today as I was 37 years ago. Uh, we started our practice in 1981. My husband, Dr. Tom Smith, um, was an amazing man, number one, but he was a lifelong student of alternative medicine. He was considerably older than I when I met him. He was uh, a biochem professor. He was already an MD, had had a life-threatening uh, radiation accident while he was a resident student, and that led him into a passion for alternative medicine because he really did save his own life through, through the alternative uh, things that he had picked up and learned along the way. So he's devoted his life to study of, of, of every imaginable um, healing art. He had a degree in all of these chiropractic, naturopathy, homeopathy, naturopathy. He didn't have licenses in all those and he certainly didn't practice in all of those, but he was fascinated and, would off, and he was a PhD biochemist. So he would teach often in these uh, medical and uh, alternative medicine schools in exchange for tuition. So he had a vast knowledge and we were working in 1981 in London and he was acquainted with a fellow named Dr. Peter Steffen who was a protege of Dr. Paul Nahans who I would mentioned earlier being the founder of cell therapy and um, he went to be, visit Peter to, to say hello. Well it turns out the elder Peter Steffens had passed away but his son also Peter Steffens, uh, had a very active cell therapy practice in London on Harley Street, which is a very upscale neighborhood for medical practice. And he spent the time we were in London interning with him when he wasn't in school. He was taking a class in nutrition, in that case, at the University of London. Spent the rest of the time with Peter Steffens, Jr. And he spent the time with interning with him at his clinic and became absolutely fascinated with cell therapy and came home told me about it and how, how the results were just marvelous and, and he talked to so many people who had stories to tell and he was just on fire. But he was a student, he was a lifelong student. So he wasn't happy with just knowing how to do it. He wanted to know the academic background. So we went to Vienna and in 1983-84, he was a student at the University of Vienna and he studied with some of the, he was very blessed. He studied in the early 80s with the doctors, Dr. Kement, um, Dr. Nita Mueller, some of these people who were the young protégés 
of Dr. Nahans. Now they were elderly men at the end of their career and Tom actually had the opportunity to study with them and get it from the horse's mouth and it was just a blessing. So that's where we started and um, at the time we had a small clinic in Mexico. The treatment is not done in the United States. Um, part of the reason we wanted to bring it back to the borders of the states was to, to make it available to more people. It was very expensive and continues to be very expensive in Europe. Um, at the University of Vienna, he, he became aware of the expenses involved with the pharmacy, pharmaceutical expenses and that sort of thing, but he realized a lot of what you're paying for in Europe is the Harley Street atmosphere, the, the privacy that some of these famous people deserve and but is expensive to provide. So we wanted to bring it back and as he said, make it available to folks, to teachers, to, to people who worked in, in the banking industry or salesmen or, or, you know, it's never going to be a completely inexpensive and available to everyone, but we certainly could broaden the um, availability. So our idea was to do that, and it, it's taken years, you know, to introduce this to people who were unfamiliar, but we started in a small town in Mexico, Nuevo Laredo, Mexico, moved uptown to Matamoros, bigger town, and then ultimately opened a clinic um, in Tijuana. And actually, I, I simply work at a clinic in Tijuana. I shouldn't say we opened it. It's a very big and, and functioning alternative medicine clinic of which I'm just a part. So we have a clinic in um, Tijuana. We have one in Nassau, Bahamas. Just opened a new clinic in Cancun, Mexico. And we're hoping to expand beyond that. But um, that's my history with the therapy. And as I said, it's my passion. And it's what I do today. It's what I've done all my adult life. And anyone who's interested, please uh, give me a call. Check out the website, www.icbr.com, or um, uh, call me, check out our Facebook page. I'll be happy to talk with you.